uh, one of the ways that you can be sure that you stay free of these sexual uh, transmitted infections is abstinence. Okay. Yeah. If you cannot abstain, marry. <laughs> yeah. Let, let me a, let me draw it very well. Yeah. If you cannot abstain, marry. marry yeah. According to Dr. Yes. John. And when you get married, ensure that you go for routine medical investigation. begin this conversation taking a quote from Tina Shema Sellers she once said our sexuality affects everything we do and everything affects our sexuality the same is true of our, sex our spirituality that that which is most deeply meaningful to us we can deny both but denying them does not mean they are not both alive in every breath and heartbeat of life Okay, we'll take our next quote. And this one is from Dr. Thailand, who is always known as Dr. T. One said, your vagina is a self-cleansing machine, meaning that there is no need to use soaps or detergents. Oops, I'm sure some people are asking, okay, how? Let's meet our next one. And our next quote is from David Lavitan, who once said, I never understood why anyone would have sex on the floor until I was with you. And I realized you don't realize you are on the floor. Okay. <laughs> My next um, quote will be from Robert Bryan who once said, Anybody who believes that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach flunked geography. How? We'll take my last one. And my last quote is from Mayor West who once said, When I am good, I'm good. But when I'm bad, I'm better. Good, bad, at what? Well, greetings and welcome to The Conversation. We're reaching you from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. I am Annabelle Oji. So what is this quote and talks about sex on the floor? Sex, sex, sex. What is it about, actually? Well, um, let's go straight to our conversation for today. I'm sure that you would, you already are surprised as I am because our conversation is taking a different turn today now if you look up your screen you see 18 plus it means that we are having a different conversation something different from politics something different from security just a little relaxing today so it means that whatever you're doing relax because we are going to have a very beautiful conversation take your children away so if you're 18 plus if you're ready for marriage you're an adult or you're a married couple and you're having a crisis in your relationship with regards to sex or sexual matters my guest is the right person to talk to and that's why we're going to be having this conversation with my guest today ladies and gentlemen like i said we're not talking politics we're not talking security. We're not talking economy. We are talking sex and for the adults. And remember, I said there's 18 plus right there. So it means it's we adults talking. Let's go on this quick break. And when we return, the conversation will hit immediately. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this conversation. And I will be your host. <music> Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is The Conversation, reaching you from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. So if you just joined us, you've actually missed out on the introduction where I talked about our topic for today. But then you can still join in the conversation as we're just about to kickstart this conversation. And my guest on the show this morning is Dr. John Adi Igove, who is a physician, public health specialist. He is um, project director at Pre-Diagnosis International, a non-governmental healthcare organization with um, its head office here in Abuja. Welcome to the show, sir. My pleasure. Great to have yeah, you. Thank you. All right. So now let's go straight to our conversation for today because I was telling our viewers that um, we are always very used to politics, talking politics in conversation, <laughs> politics, um, economy, security, but now we're taking it a little bit, um, just go a little bit easy on our, our guests, this, our viewers this morning. So now let's start by talking about um, safe health um or health matters or um healthy sexual matters what is there a difference between um, um safe sex and healthy sex if there is let us know all right uh thanks very much it's my pleasure to be here on your program um i think the topic of health is something that uh, you've done very well 
and bringing up on board because uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, in Nigeria, uh, it's always something that people don't usually discuss very well in the open. Mm. Uh, sex education is something that most people, you know, see it like it's an abomination. Mm. And yet, it's a very integral part of human being. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. Uh, sexual health for every individual uh, is something that has to do with both the mental, physical, and then the social well-being of that individual. Uh, there are quite uh, a number of um, safe sex practices uh, that are very healthy. Okay. So from your question, when you look at it, um, healthy sexual life and then safe sex, they all intertwine. Okay. Uh -huh. There are safe sex practices that will lead to sustaining an individual's sexual health. Ah, okay. uh -huh. So when you look at so one has to be like a smaller unit of mm, the other. Okay, okay. And, and this um, will enumerate um, maybe as we move on. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. So then uh, help us. Um, what, what is the difference? You said one is like the subunit of the other. So what yeah. is safe sex and what is healthy? sex okay uh, let me start by uh, maybe giving a definition what sexual health is all about okay um, according to the world health organization uh, sexual health is something that has to do with an individual's physical social emotional well-being in relation to his or her sexuality mm. um, so having this in mind uh, you will also understand there are certain indices or principles that now have to do with uh, an individual's sexuality um, in terms of your awareness, in terms of how you feel, in terms of uh, your, your, your general conception, you know, about sexual practices. Now, there are safe and unsafe sexual practices, and mm. each of them will contribute to an individual's sexual health. Okay. Uh -huh. So, when you look at safe sex practices, these are practices that individuals, both male and female, will indulge in that will prevent them or that will reduce the risk of them catching sexually transmitted infections. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and then there are also unsafe practices that people are in, indulge in that increases their risk of uh, getting contaminated or getting infected with sexually transmitted infections. So um, you, you want to expand, expand on it generally, mm. you'll be able to see that in what is in sexual relations, an individual, uh, male or female, have their own orientation. Um, you'll be able to understand that um, there are different types of sexual behaviors that people indulge in uh, right at the moment. Um, just to put it on a, on a, on a um, big platter of uh, plate, you'll be able to see that there are individuals that have the orientation of the regular man-to-woman sexual relationship and mm. uh, that has to do with vaginal sex yeah yeah there are other safe practices like individuals also undergoing masturbation mm. uh, there are sex practices oral sex mm. is also something that people uh, have talked about and all of these have uh, their own contribution to an individual's sexual health for example let's look at it uh, the natural way uh, that uh, people have the straight orientation is the vaginal, the vaginal sex that sex. exists between male and female. Mm. Now, to a very large mm. extent, uh, this is a healthy um, way of having sexual relations. However, there are certain practices that individuals will have to imbibe in to ensure that their sexual health remains optimal. Uh, for example, when individuals have unprotected sex, for instance, okay. especially for those in, in the society today, you see people who have multiple sex partners, those mm -hmm. who, pro, who practice bigamy, mm -hmm. uh, away from monogamy, which is one, ma one partner one, to mm -hmm. one partner. Uh, individuals who have multiple sex partners, those who are polygamous in nature, um, all of these individuals are exposed to the risk of unhealthy sexual life. In other words, their chances of contaminating or getting infected with sexually transmitted infections is very high because of the multiple partners uh, that you have. Sorry, I had to burn in. Those um, who patronize sex workers, those who patronize or who do pornography, yes. are they in, on this table? Yes, on this table because you are okay. talking of multiple sexual partners here now. Okay. So an individual who has multiple customers who patronize sex workers uh, indulges in pornography. Um, of course, though that is a little bit, I'm going to talk about that much later, but multiple sex par partners, for instance, exposes an individual to a very high risk of an unhealthy sexual health. Okay. Uh -huh. And this, of course, you can talk in terms of the number of infections that are available at the moment. I'm going to also mention that. Now, for others who also practice issues, things like masturbation, 
who indulge in pornography. Pornography will lead most individuals also to masturbate. Yeah. Uh -huh. Some others will do it with that with their partners. There are individuals also who practice other uh, unhealthy life, uh, unhealthy sex practices, lesbianism, uh, oral health. All of these individuals are all exposed to uh, sex the risk of catching sexually transmitted infections. Are you saying that those who indulge in the LGBTQ plus they are also all of them all of all these individuals are exposed to as long as there is a chance of having multiple sex partners there's a chance of having unprotected sexual intercourse especially uh with the way society is now individuals are not able the, the, the normal practice that you see even in my own practice you see a lot of individuals who go into sexual relationship without actually uh, undergoing any form of medical testing uh any form of um um detection to find out what is the state of my sexual health mm. and then individuals will now go into having unprotected sex the possibility of catching infections are very high mm. and these infections we are talking about ranges from so many of them bacterial infections or some of them caused by viruses okay. uh, bacterial infections things like chlamydia uh, vaginosis is one of the most popular and you talk in terms of gonorrhea uh, neisseria caused by an organism called neisseria gonorrhea uh, then you could talk in terms of syphilis mm. um, and then of course the bigger ones like HIV infection, mm. uh, human papilloma virus, and the rest of them. All of these are infections that are very common in the society today. Mm. And, and they, they cut across regardless of gender. It meets regardless everyone's of color. gender, male, female, and they're about. Everyone is exposed as long as you indulge in these unsafe sex practices. Okay. And here we talk about uh, now uh, for individuals, people will tell you, okay, so what do we do? Like I mentioned earlier before, there are certain practices that we can imbibe in. Uh, like I said, one monogamy mm. one sexual partner for instance and then of course the two individuals involved will have to visit a doctor and be sure that their sexual health is well established before they go into unprotected sex mm. uh, so and this cuts across those who indulge in um, L LGBT and the rest of them all of this have to be ensured then also um, you also be a uh, we also caution individuals, for instance, the use of contraceptives like condoms mm -hmm. and all of it will also guide individuals against um, infections like chlamydia, for example, gonorrhea and the rest of them. When the contraceptive or condoms are properly used. Ah, when I they like are the properly, fact when they are properly, properly. properly used. Okay. Uh, and this uh, involves uh, the fact that individuals will have to ensure that when these condoms are used and um, after sexual relationship, there are proper ways of disposing them without um, having any stain on, on an individual system. So these are ways uh, that individuals can ensure uh, that they stay safe. But by and large, uh, one of the ways that we encourage individuals to um, really behave, to be able to keep their sexual health in at very optimal state, is to ensure testing. Okay. Individuals to ensure you visit the laboratory and ensure you are able to uh, screen for sexually transmitted infections, urinary tract, uh, tract infections. Uh, this will help the individuals to be sure that they are sexually, they are free from these sexually transmitted infections before okay. they contract any, any form of uh, sexual relationship. Mm. So I hear you talk about some of these um, um, uh, sexually transmitted infections, the STIs, the STDs, the UTIs and all, but then some other, some persons will tell you that is it ordinary STI that you have and you want to be, it's just, just drink one and then you are fine. How dangerous are some of these, um, these diseases or infections, be it gonorrhea, be it staph, whichever one? Wow. Um, all of these infections, either bacteria or um, viruses. Are very dangerous infections now one of the dangers of these infections i must uh, let nigerians know is that some of these infections are asymptomatic especially oh. at the very early stages okay. in other words an individual will show up with no sign mm. you know now when individuals carry it these organisms are reproduced asexually that means they don't require a partner to multiply Okay. So they stay in the individual and then multiply to an extent where they become symptomatic. At the stage when they become symptomatic, it has gone from that latent phase now to a phase where the individual will start having symptoms like vaginal discharge, itching, painful urination, sometimes even inflammation, ah. you know, 
uh, on the on the on the private parts and the rest of that. How long would have you have you been asymptomatic before you get to start? It, it varies from individual to individual. Okay. Uh, some it is even immediate within one week or two. Okay. It could manifest. Some others could carry it even as much as six months before mm. it manifests. You know. So, uh, in terms of their danger, it is quite dangerous. Apart from the discomfort, you know, that it offers to the individual, it can affect the reproductive life of that individual. You know, that as people can have these infections and get married, and then they are unable. For a man, is able to make a woman pregnant. Oh wow! Uh, for a woman, she's able. She's unable to get pregnant. And lots of infertility challenges that you have in the society today are as a result of the presence of these sexually transmitted infections, which of course you have large volume of bacteria um, inhabiting uh, the reproductive or the sexual parts of the genitals. And this, like gonorrhea for example, syphilis, staphylococcus, we've, we've mentioned chlamydia, all of these are very popular infections that people carry. And then in terms of interacting with one another in workplaces for example, people share toilets. Mm. Um, uh, people, um, and, and when they, they share some of these toilets, people are not careful enough to ensure that they clean even before they sit on these toilets. Imagine in a work environment where you have 20, 30, 50 staff. Mm. Most of these individuals are sharing same toilet. Some individuals will wait until when they are very pressed and then you rush to the toilet without having to do some minor cleaning, you sit. Mm. The chances of picking up infections will become very high mm. in this situation. And when you carry them, for individuals who now have multiple sexual partners, they are transmitting these oh, wow. infections from one individual to the other. Okay. And if you if you uh, sketch the three, you can imagine an individual who has uh, one sexual partner. The man has another girlfriend. The girlfriend has another boyfriend. He becomes in mm -hmm. a month. You are mm -hmm. talking of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and of individuals that will be infected as a result of that uh, mm -hmm. issue. So, by and large, it offers a lot of the consequences are there okay. in very advanced form. It can even lead to cardiovascular disorders like heart diseases. Heart? Yes. Oh, really? Yes. Co very complicated forms of them can lead to uh, some of these um, bigger uh, consequences. So, the onus lies in the individual to ensure that at every point in time, the World Health Organization says at least once in six months, every individual should undergo routine medical check okay. to ensure, apart from your vital signs like blood pressure uh, and others, the individual is also able to check. You know, for some of these infectious diseases, even including hepatitis B, HIV, and the rest of them. For the bigger ones, something like HIV, for example, which is of course also sexually transmitted. Mm. Um, of course, we all know um, the consequences of it. You know, uh, at, at the latent stage, it is also asymptomatic. Individuals are not able to discover, mm. except you undergo routine testing. Mm. Now, when it is full-blown AIDS, at that point, it is irreversible. Mm. You know, and then individuals, the immune system completely breaks down. An individual will uh, be faced with a lot of health challenges um, uh, going on from there. And this as a result of some of these unsafe sex practices that individuals under, undergo. Okay. Some people will tell you uh, things like um, uh, other ways that sexual um, um, infections can be spread. Kissing. Kissing? Quoi? Yes. Or some people say as long as there's no blood somewhere, yeah. it doesn't affect anything. But you are anything. not very sure whether there are cracks. Oh, on the lips. Yeah, right. Whether there are cracks. Some of these infections manifest as a result of even small injury around the lips mm. or even the buccal cavity. Okay. So, individuals who engage in this also are exposed to the chances of getting some of these infections. So, so it means that if you are kissing that person, please be sure that they don't Be have sure that the person has undergone medical testing and you are both healthy. Okay. Uh, so, some, these are some of the things that uh, we can do to guide against... Um, uh, some of these infections and live a very healthy sexual life okay so some of the other ways that, because i hear you talk about toilets especially when you share toilets with people in, in your workplace and some someone one, once asked when we're having a discussion and said okay what if i don't use the that white um, uh, the ceramic what yeah. if i put the plastic on top after all these infections don't go into plastic how true is that how many individuals will also you do the same Mm. If it is a toilet that is shared by so many individuals, so how many people will do the same use of the plastic? So the, the most important thing to do here is to ensure that you don't rush into the toilet when you are very pressed. Okay. Encourage, personally, I encourage individuals, both male and female, a small disinfectant, an antiseptic like the tall eyes and the rest of them, you know, can put in your bag, take your time, go in there, get water, mm. wash. Minor. Then before you can now sit on and then you, you use the place. As long as 
it is more than one person using that place. Mm. In doing this, one can be sure uh, that the chances of contacting some of these infections will be highly reduced. Mm. Okay, because you mentioned, you made some statement that have, we're going to draw out questions from. You talked yeah. about multiple sex partners and all. Then I've also seen where women, where most married women will say, I don't care if he sleeps around, what's my business? As long as he comes home, he comes back home, he takes care of my family, my mm -hmm. children are going to good schools, mm -hmm. he, is re he remembers that he has a family that he remembers home i really don't care and then some of, some other persons will say ah you should just do his thing but he should not bring um, a disease home so for those kind of people that they've already zeroed their mind and they in their mind they're already like men will always cheat how do you deal well this is where sexual education has to come in uh we all have to be properly educated on the dangers of multiple sex partners uh on the dangers of um, living without regular medical checkup. Okay. Yeah. Um, for every couple out there, it is very important um, that we stay faithful to our spouses. It's very important. Mm. Yeah. Uh, faithfulness is, is very important. For the younger people who are married, uh, one of the ways that you can be sure that you stay free of these sexual uh, transmitted infections is abstinence. Okay. Yeah. If you cannot abstain, marry. <laughs> yeah. Let, let me a, let me draw it very well. Yeah. If you cannot abstain, marry. marry yeah. According to Dr. Yes. John. And when you get married, ensure that you go for routine medical investigation. Okay. Yeah. Um How routine uh, is routine? Routine means on a regular basis. How, every six how, months, for example. Months. Okay. Yeah. For instance, you should be able to go in and then the doctors will know what to do. And then they check you for it. It is better when you visit the hospital. And then these tests are done and the doctor says, oh, you are fine. Or uh, better when the infections are detected at a very early stage. Okay. At that point, they can be treated. I uh, talk of the bacterial infections, simple antibiotics can take care of them. Okay. And the rest of this. But if you allow them to get complicated, it becomes more expensive and much more difficult. Especially yeah. for those who are asymptomatic. Exactly. So um, regular medical checkup will help these individuals, you know, to get them treated at a very early stage. So for couples... It is very dangerous for a man or a woman to indulge in sexual relations, sexual intercourse with a partner whose sex status you are not very sure of. Aha. HIV, hepatitis B, hmm. HPV, human papilloma virus, gonorrhea, and the rest of them. All of these, like I mentioned before, can be an in, in an individual and the person looks as healthy as anything. Hmm. And then in, in, through the course of uh, the interaction, you pick up this infections and then it's transmitted back to the house mm. so for women if you if you feel your man the, the important thing is everybody must be educated to the level where you know the danger of what you are going into ah. if you are engaging and uh, keeping multiple sex partners ensure that you are properly guided take them for medical checkup i usually talk to young people talk to couples i talk for families if you meet somebody and the person loves you enough that he wants to have sexual relationship with the individual. Wait, calm down, visit the hospital and run some <laughs> medical investigation. <laughs> right. It will help to prevent some bigger problems in the future. Right, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Okay, so now we, you also talked about um, masturbation. Now let us talk about masturbation because it looks like uh, in some parts, some people will say it's, it's good after all. I'm not um, indulging in multiple sexual uh, partners mm -hmm. at all. I'm just doing it my own thing. And then in some parts, some people will say, what's there? It's, it, it's, it's, for some it is good and for some it's bad. It's a different kettle of fish entirely for different people. Talk to us about masturbation and is it good or is it bad? And at what point is it like, oh, it's actually worse? All right. Um, the masturbation, use of sex toys, I'll put all of them um, all together. Okay. Now, um, a lot of individuals will argue and tell you it is fine uh, because after all, I'm only, I'm just myself. Mm. And, and you don't indulge in having any contact with anybody. So some individuals who want to glorify themselves with that. However, it still exposes an individual to the risk of infections. How? When you masturbate, if we go into the practical sense of it, what are the substances that individuals use in the course of masturbation? Some use oils and creams, some soaps, some different substances. Even your bare hands that you, you use mm. are exposed oh, okay. to bacteria and the rest of them. Um, 
in very practical terms, I've talked to individuals who even go as far as using saliva and the rest of them. There's a transfer of bacteria from one location to the other. Mm. There are bacteria that should be in the mouth and shouldn't be in other areas. If they oh. are there, they give you issues. Okay. So all of these, um, the possibilities of um, catching infections is still there. Mm. Then, masturbation on its own is a mental issue. Now, the danger, the, the most dangerous part of it is that when individuals get addicted, it is addictive, that is one. When individuals mm. get used to it, masturbation, either self or the use of toys, mm. for unmarried people or those who are single mothers, single fathers, mm. the risk of it is that by the time you get married or have a partner, you will no more enjoy sexual relation or intercourse with your partner. You'll be so used to masturbation. Really? Yes. It's happened. In my practice over 10 years, I've seen this happen. Okay. And then again, it, in men, it leads to erectile dysfunction. In so many men who engage in um, masturbation, okay. Okay, by so the time they get 40 and above. Okay, so sorry, are, sorry I had to put in there. Yes. For the benefit of that viewer who is listening, yes. what is erectile dysfunction? Yeah, erectile uh, dysfunction is your inability it? to sustain an erection as a man okay. within a period where you can have intercourse with a woman. You've heard of so many things that damage families today. Uh, you have women complaining. Um, it's a one minute man. Exactly. One, one minute, three minutes, two minutes, three minutes. Mm. And women are not wired that way. Mm. You know, women are wired to stay longer. And then because you have indulged in such kind of practices, the, the more you engage in uh, masturbation, the more you engage in the use of sexual toys, the reproductive, the genitals become much more sensitive. And then okay. the chances of that individual uh, reaching climax, even very early, before the woman has even started, becomes a challenge. Uh -huh. And this has been a danger in most marriages, in mm. most families. And then the, 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 the worst part of it is that it's difficult for some people to speak out. Mm. You know, yeah, they harbor sure. this thing, harbor this until it's almost tearing families. Some families have even fallen apart because of it, because the man is unable to satisfy the wife or in a situation where it is the woman involved, the woman is able to... You know, because she masturbates or she uses sex toy, by the mm. time the husband comes, she's no more in the mood because mm. she enjoys that rate of vibration, which of mm. course no man can vibrate in that way. <laughs> if you're, if you're used to it. So these really? are very practical terms that uh, we can, you know, uh, let people know mm. and then to be very careful in, in what you do. Mm. God has created the individual wired in such a way that man and woman should be able to relate in very natural terms. And then, of course, individuals will have to also engage themselves in discussion. How many people in Nigeria today, in Sub-Saharan Africa today, are able to sit down and discuss? Let's talk about our sexual life as a couple. When you are contracting marriage or you're having a boyfriend or girlfriend, how many individuals say, okay, let's talk about our sexual life. And then they're able to establish it, you know. And without this, a lot of individuals have lived in so many kind of assumptions. Mm. And then at the end of it, it will lead to dissatisfaction, to lead to uh, so many other things. And then you see relationships, people walking away silently and the rest of them. But when we are properly educated, when we discuss this topic amongst one another, it will help us to put ourselves in the right perspective and it will make marriages and relationships bond much closer. Okay, so I'm going to ask you two questions before we go on that break, on yeah. a short break and then come back. Yeah. Two questions I'd like you to unbond them in one breath. One is um, on this masturbation, those who are already neck deep into it, or like you said, some are even addicted already. And then some people will say it is highly spiritual, it yeah. is marine, it is... Yeah, that's why I said it's mental. Okay, so yeah. how would they emancipate from them, uh, themselves from such yeah. if they're already neck deep into it that's one on the side and then yeah. because actually i was actually i would always read your um your comments and your writings and then in one of them you said a remedy approach for sexual weakness sexual weakness is inability to have or maintain an erection for sexual activities some courses long time and consistency in masturbation can cause your penis not to erect yeah. so we'll let i'll have you talk about that and then secondly i hear you say talk to yourselves before you get married then when we did uh, when in some of our social media um uh, questions somebody asked and raised and said that um when um there's this um joy when you're single and then you tell yourself that when i get married oh i'm going to do the whole kama sutra style for my husband or i'm going yeah. to <laughs> we are going to hit ourselves yeah. we die there yeah. but then when you now finally get married there's this Oh, please, you have forever to go through. Yeah. So why exactly does it happen? Someone asked that question. Why do you, what, why do you have now go into the marriage and, oh, please, let, let's just have babies and then move on? Okay, well, let me take it from the last one. Um, 
when people are younger, you know, there are certain fantasies that we live with on, you mm. know, uh, the dream of, you know, I want to get married, I want to have sex, I want to do this. But people are shocked by the time you eventually get married, you know, the thought goes beyond uh, sex now. Mm. Other challenges will come in as a man. There's house rent to pay. <laughs> There's school fees for the children. And they are then, marrying $1,500. Exactly. Exactly. And then there are so many other issues that you need to take. Mm. Psychologically, these things will occupy your mind. That if you are not very careful uh, in, in, in um, you know, facing reality, if you are not mentally prepared for this, it will affect your marriage. Okay. You know, by the time you look as a man, you look at the bills you have to pay. And then you are thinking overnight, how am I going to meet up this and all that? And they, your wife crawls up to you in the night. If you're not very careful, you know, because it's a mental thing. Yeah. Yeah. Woman, I beg, let me rest. Mm. And, and, and you're hotter. You know, so by and large, it is for people to be prepared okay. mentally. You know, people need to read. Um, unfortunately, Nigerians, most people don't read. Mm. We need to read, get lots of sexual education in this aspect, and then see how um, to live with the normal challenges. And then to also still have to pick up your responsibility as a husband, you know, or as a wife. Okay. Uh -huh. So it, it has to deal with our mentality. And then speak out. Okay. There are situations where individuals are going through some psychological issues. It could be a man, it could be a woman. The, 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 I used to tell people, your wife or your husband is your first doctor. Mm. If you have an open communication... You know where you're able to talk to each other honey this is the way i feel i don't feel good and this this your partner will be able to understand you you know so when we have these conversations around um our sexuality our sex life as a couple it helps the family to be better and and then much uh, and get bonded moving forward i uh, sorry remind me of the other question masturbation again. how those yeah. who are neck deep already. so those who are neck deep in masturbation the masturbation i mentioned for is a mental thing mm. it's spiritual you know now, uh, for individuals who are involved in it, it needs to take a lot of effort mm. to run out of it. It's like somebody who is addicted to drugs. Mm. You need to take a lot of, make a lot of effort to come out of it. One, you need to start changing your mentality that you are not created for yourself. Okay. Okay. You know, I am not created for myself. Mm. I am created for somebody. Mm. So if you understand that, you stop abusing yourself and then you see it as an abuse on your person. Oh, great. Okay. I'm abusing my system. This is not supposed to be me. So once this occupies a person's mind, then the person should start making conscientious effort to stay away from it. There are some of the things that lead people to masturbate. Pornography is one, for mm. example. You know, some individuals are wired in this way that even the sight of a woman or uh, will make them start feeling the need to go into it mm. and then you see people indulge in it especially from a very early stage now i've met a lot of young people teenagers for example who now adolescents grow into you know their early adult life and some of them have been used to this parents contribute to this issue of masturbation as well oh how so yeah you have a child you have a daughter you have a son who is growing 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, and there has never been a day that the mother will call that child to say, you want to sexually educate these children. You need to let them understand. Some of these children are caged in such a way that they don't even relate mm. with the outside world. So, they, they, they tend to have things around them that will make them feel content. After all, mommy says, I should not go out. That is, I should not go out. I, you stay there. Yes, allow them to interact, but watch and guide their interaction. Okay. And then fill them again, of course, with moral lessons, educate them properly to understand that this is what it takes as a woman on how to behave. This is what is your responsibility as a man, also on the opposite sex. So this will go a long way. For those who are neck deep in it again, I, I, I'll, I'll tell the individuals, at that time when the urge comes, it's like somebody who is addicted to smoking or drinking. Mm. Can you walk out and have some exercise done? It could help you. Okay. Yeah. Um, at that period, if you divert your attention either to read a book or to take a walk out or get to somewhere where you interact from away from that your personal um, um, habitation, mm. move out. Okay. It will help you to, to really come out of this. And then again, if it becomes difficult, speak to a doctor. Ah, oh, okay. So yeah. now even for those who say that um, maybe we uh, I invited a girl and then we're trying to have sex, but she, later she said she's not interested, but I'm already like in cloud nine. Yeah. So at that point, instead, just walk out. Walk out. Okay. Leave that environment at that point in time. And then 
you'll be able to get over all of that, mm. you know. All right, then. Viewers is um, v quite um, clear and sure that we are very we are in for more in, um, information from this conversation, and we'll definitely get right more into it after this time out with our very own guest, Dr. John. I'll see you later after this time out. Join us again. A woman that has dirty bed sheets, mm. and then you want to your husband to come in. You will not feel you will not feel comfortable i've encouraged couples when you, you 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 your husband is at work and then you want all of this develop the habit of communicating to one another you so it means it starts from yeah if, starts has, from, if they do have to start from uh, happening at 8 p.m you should start from like 1 p.m exactly ah sometimes okay. the man is even at work texting that time when you were boyfriend and girlfriend, you were chatting all through from morning to night in mm. the evening and all that. But when people now get married, that disappears. Mm. No, it should be a recurrent thing. Okay. He's at work. You know, you should be able to text him, say something sexy. And then by the time you know he's getting ready to come back, dress good. Ah. Let the room smell good. Not to be a rapper. Exactly. <laughs> things like that, you know. These are some of the things that couples can actually, you know, create an environment where even your your man will be happy to come home mm. if you're also a man make sure you maintain your hygiene you know i've seen men who talk, a lot of women have listened to them even when they come in uh, for consultation and they really say i cannot stand the mouth order from my husband yeah. have you told him before mm. my husband has body odor have you told him before buy him perfumes so men because of the stress of going from one issue to the other to pick family bills and the rest of them now abandon this when they get married mm. But that's your dressing, how good you were looking, you know, how clean you were looking before you attracted that woman to agree to marry you. Why have you changed? Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is The Conversation, reaching you from Kaftan's television today here in the nation's capital, Abuja. If you just joined us, you've actually missed out on a whole lot, but then you can still join in the second part of the show as my guest on the show today is Dr. John Ade, and he will have been talking about um, healthy sexual mat um, matters or sexual um, staying safe, especially when you have to go through sex. All right, so before we went on that break, we've actually talked about um, um, masturbation. Now let's talk about condoms. I actually saw a a video i can't remember which um country is from but they were complaining the national their national assembly were complaining of the fact that pe youth don't use condoms anymore because some of them complain that it is too small for their organs so now let's talk about the use of condoms because i remember you talk about you need to ensure that you protect yourself use a condom if you have to go through sex then when you have some other persons who will say that uh, like for their national assembly have complained that their youth don't use it because it's too small for their organs but then you also have some other persons that will tell you that the condom is not giving me the right feel how exactly would you speak to such people ah uh, well um general use of contraceptives like condoms for example condoms are made in such a way that um the sizes are universal it expands okay uh, so in terms of those who are complaining except an individual is extra extra large if not, I think the condoms are made in such a way, from my experience, I've not seen um, maybe one uh, that individuals could say it is not enough. So whether the man is small or big, I think there are condoms that could accommodate all of that. So I think we'll need to investigate uh, maybe for those who say it is too small for them and the rest of them. Uh, however, we've had some complaints uh, from individuals also about it in terms of the sensitivity of mm -hmm. uh, the latex condom because they are made from uh, latex uh, some individuals will complain and tell you um, they don't enjoy uh, the use of condoms well that varies from individual also from uh, one person to the other however uh, condoms are made or wired in such a way that um, the pleasure that is obtained from sexual intercourse um, is usually also still achievable even with the use of condoms. Um, and this, to a very large extent, has been something that has been a subject of review, of uh, review from research, okay. uh -huh, where condoms are being produced um, in regular uh, yearly updates to become more sensitive uh, and then much more so friendly uh, with the users. 
So, so those users who tell you that it's not, um, it doesn't feel like the real. No. They're just. It's I just think I think it's, it's, it's an excuse. Okay. Uh, most, uh, especially uh, most people use to avoid mm. the use of uh, condoms. Uh, for those who tell you it is not not sensitive and all that, it's their choice. It's fine. We cannot say no to individual choices. However, visit the hospital first. Mm. before you come and carry out those activities. That's what we encourage people. Okay. So that young woman, that young man that is out there, um, you meet somebody who is telling you you cannot use condom and the rest of the, okay, let's go to the hospital to run a check first. Mm. Let's do HIV screening, let's test for sexually uh, transmitted infections and be sure that we are both clean. Mm. Then we can keep con the condom aside. Okay. So this is basically what my um, advice and encourage people. All right, now let's go to um, other matters. Let's talk about, you talked about different kinds of sex. You talked about oral sex, the vaginal sex. Then let's talk about anal sex. You have some, most people who would um, prefer to do anal sex. And then they will tell you that um, because it is tighter in that way. And then some other persons will tell you that a religious matter, it means that it, it actually means different things to different people. And then do you, would, two questions again from here. Would you actually contact these bacteria if you have to go through in our sex that's one and then secondly and you have some people who would tell you that as a couple you're married your husband you, you can do whatever you want to do if he wants anal sex give him anal sex as long as you're com comfortable with it if you want to have sex on um on top of a fence as long as you guys are comfortable with it but then some other persons will say oh please that is way beyond my spirituality Help us demystify this all right um i'm speaking as a professional here okay uh not um a uh, not leader. a pastor a religious person I, I am catholic uh there are certain practices that are also very safe uh, even in the catholic church uh and as a medical person who is catholic there are certain practices that we also uh, that the church encourages even the use of contraceptives on his own in the catholic faith is not allowed now to anal sex um people need to understand what they are going into you know, I think for everything in life, the adv people have to weigh the advantages and the disadvantages. Mm. Yeah, when people get married, you have um, your, your partner, everything about him or her as yours. Mm. Where nobody's arguing on that. However, the anatomy of the human person is wired in such a way that, yes, a man can obtain pleasure from any part of the human body. That is, okay. that is true. Okay. You know, uh, when it comes to sex, there's even the, 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 the parlors that we use, even if you put a tree and the man puts his organ in there, he will get pleasure. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, wow. No. So, but then you need to understand what are the dangers that are associated with this. Mm. And now, for example, what is the anus or the rectum? What is it all about? It is to pass out unwanted remains mm. or products of, di of, di of, uh, in di of digestion. Now, add on the anus, the rectum to, 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 the, to the anus are certain bacteria that stay with feces mm. and they occupy this area. This bacteria will seem to uh, make us uncomfortable if they are migrated from the anus to the reproductive tract or migrated from there to the buccal cavity or the mm. mouth. Mm. So for those who indulge in anal sex, there is the chance of cross-contamination. Okay. The bacteria from the anus into the, the genitalia. This is very highly very possible and then of course the consequences that follow will be there now for women again I've, I've seen cases where people will as they advance in age have anal protrusion or relapse mm. of the rectum the rectum is a muscle that is responsible for passing out feces now for those who indulge in anal sex uh, as much more than even uh, um, vaginal sex mm. there's the chance of weakening of the rectal muscle oh yeah and when i hear some people say it is elastic it is rubber nothing happens no it does when you go into the deep anatomy of it there are, there's the rectal ani and certain muscles that hold that tube mm. inside this tube can slack ah. and then you see a lot of individuals having prolapse mm. that's the sac on his own mm. coming out oh wow and then they start going to the hospital some of them will tell you they are seeing blood or you get injured and all of that because the muscle there is created in such a way that it is so tight and it only opens up when physics is meant to come out okay during sexual intercourse and relation the anus doesn't do that okay. it is forceful mm. and this can hurt and injure the individual as much as they can 
So um, as much as people will tell you this is very good, we all we tell the individual you are endangering the woman's life. Mm. Because at a later point in time, she might begin to start having leakages and the rest of them, and then start wearing pampas at a later age in life and the rest of them. So these are the consequences that people must understand. So as they derive pleasure from doing it, also note that tomorrow something else may happen that then you start complaining as in addition to the possibility of uh, co uh, co infection you know from the anus you know to to uh, the reproductive uh, tract okay so since we're talking about women especially now for some people who have if we read from our um, social question coming from our social media mm -hmm. um uh, uh post someone says that um, she was circumcised and then um, that she doesn't like sex and i've seen people send that uh, message um uh, all the time yeah. so for such persons who uh, would say that because they are is it okay that's two questions again does circumcision have anything to do with the fact that they don't have pleasure or, or feeling for sex and then for such persons how would they deal yeah for women genital mutilation is a world um the public health challenge uh, that we've been involved with um, a lot of advocacy and then um sexual education now what is uh that's what is commonly referred to as circumcision mm. you know when the genitals are mutilated what happens a woman is wired in such a way that uh the most sensitive part uh in the external genitalia is the clitoris mm. now in the process of genital mutilation it is cut off uh, it is circumcised it is an old belief system uh that was made uh, to reduce the level in those days of promiscuity mm. in the society because when that is removed, on the genitalia, there is a small gland on it that helps a woman, uh, that um, um, gives a woman more of sexual pleasure. Okay. And then the secretions that come with it. Now, when it is removed, you know, that becomes difficult. Mm. Uh -huh. A woman will no more have pleasure or even sexual desire. So she has to be at the mercy of her husband who comes at any time he, he wants. Mm. And then the woman just a recipient of just do your thing and go do your thing and go mm. and then she gets pregnant and have her children but the real act of having to enjoy sexual intercourse is completely destroyed does it affect the man men also no men get circumcised and then the outer skin in circumcision the outer skin is removed mm. exposing the glance penis which of course is much more sensitive so it okay. is like the opposite oh. uh, uh, every man is supposed to be circumcised but not the uh, woman okay uh, so genital mutilation is something that we should condemn i mm. condemn it uh we should all join even in a campaign to talk maybe uh in subsequent mm. uh, editions we can talk about it and bring it on mm. the front burner mm. talk about it it is dangerous it is also exposes the woman to the chance of contacting even infections oh. uh tetanus um even sexually transmitted uh, infections hiv because of the gadgets mm. or instruments that used. are used to carry out uh, some of these mutilations and this is done by crude untrained women in mm. the villages who are experts in all of this so it's not something that should be encouraged one it puts the woman into a lot of trauma some women even actually die as a result of bleeding mm. and all of this so it's um, a mundane okay kind of practice that should not be seen even in a modern day world okay so if you have women who are already there been there done that and then they are married how would they um have to i'm find, trying to find the right word at least make themselves That's sexually right. active again their psychology has to come in here oh okay. yeah um, in this way um I've, I've, I've talked to a number of people in so many forums and here the husband has to come in very handy okay because it is not her fault that this has happened so um the husband has to talk to her she has to um read or get educated to a level where she changes her mindset and thinking mm. and then in this um women in this bracket too will enjoy a lot of foreplay okay. before sexual relationships so okay. so it's uh, not the men that would just do no no no, no straight no, that, to the point that would be very punishing ah okay. you know so a lot of foreplay a lot of um attention will have to be given to that woman to be able to um, um have full satisfaction when it comes to sexual uh, intercourse with her partner Mm. all right then so let's go to other matters um there's somebody ask when is the best time to make love with my spouse <laughs> okay uh that varies from every individual mm. um it is not cast on stone uh the best time for me may be different from yours and from another person but i think for couples 
is to discuss and talk about it okay. and agree or have an idea. But by and large, I want to state here that for married couples, sex should be spontaneous. There are no timetables for it. When you have sex with a timetable or when sex is prescribed by a doctor, it becomes work. I like the fact he is prescribed. It becomes work. <laughs> mm, okay. You see couples who are having challenge of infertility. Mm. And then you come in and when you get to interact and relate with them, they tell you, ah, my husband is so busy. We don't even... When you ask, the, how many times do you meet in a week? They tell you once or twice in a month. Oh. You know? <laughs> so, and then the doctor comes in, will not tell you, you must, to get your wife pregnant, you must meet three, four times. That is sex prescribed. Ah. It becomes boring <laughs> and boring. So if you mm. set a timetable with your partner, the fun of it will be lost. Let it be spontaneous. Let it be unplanned. Mm. Let it be uh, at moments when both of you are very happy. Create the moment. There are times when I know, yes, you can create the moment. Okay. Um, um, it's her birthday. It's his birthday. Uh, something promotion at work. Something mm. good has come on or something. You just choose, okay, maybe today I chose to make my wife happy or my husband happy. You create the environment. Let's okay. have this. In the Western world, you see people, uh, couples go on holidays during mm. the summer. Mm. But here we walk January to December. <laughs> there's, there's no time no for... Need no transfer. <laughs> exactly. No time for this. And then when you see them, they go to the beach, go to different places, and they are there. Even if you have children, at this point, leave the children somewhere. Okay. Go back to that period when, as a couple, you are boyfriend and girlfriend, mm. and have time for each other. It does a lot. It relieves a lot of pressure. It relieves a lot of tension. It, 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 there are certain hormones, you know, dopamines and the rest of them, happy hormones that mm. are secreted within this period when couples are together. So the whole psychology of the individual becomes much more better uh, when couples have a very healthy sexual life. Mm. Awesome. All right, we'll take our next one. And this one says, um, okay, how, how do I get, okay i'm trying to uh, put it together i think she's talking about how she can get to orgasm wow okay. yeah orgasm is um the peak period of sex uh when individuals um have sexual intercourse now it varies from one individual to the other okay some within two minutes some five minutes some much longer you know and also from men to women. Women are found to be, um, um, they take more time to reach, reach orgasm. orgasm okay. Climax, you know. A man can come in and then we need two, three minutes, he's done. And it, like when we're talking of erectile, mm. sorry, mm. a premature ejaculation and the rest of them. But women uh, are wired in such a way that a woman is attracted by touch. What moves her is the touch. Mm. A man is the sight, ah. which is why men rape women, because a woman is passing somewhere and then you've seen the brain is wired in such a way mm. that the man is ready within seconds, mm. but the woman takes a longer period. So how do you reach orgasm as a woman? The man the, and the woman has to ensure they engage in foreplay. Okay. Yeah. Foreplay. Um, and then but then that foreplay is not reducing the man's time already? No. Um, if, if both, uh, um, they should be used to each other in such a way that a man does not just come in and jump on his woman. It is boring. Mm. You leave the woman in the middle of the road. So when you engage in foreplay, uh, and one of the best things I've spoken to a lot of people, uh, on sexual matters and one of the best feeling a couple can have is when you meet your woman at a level where you both come. Okay. You know, and that has to involve a lot of foreplay. You know, so men avoid the habit of you rushing because you are feeling you want to do this, you want to do that. Play with your woman to a level where you feel she's at the peak. Mm. Uh -huh. And that person in practical terms, she will be the one to even ask you to come on. Mm. Uh -huh. So at that point, you reach her to a point where she will get to orgasm. At that point, what happens? A lot of hormones are released from her system. Mm. A lot of pressure and stress comes out of our system and very often in 70 to 75 percent of cases you see couples after they reach orgasm both will sleep ah okay because mm. it lowers the blood pressure mm. you know a lot of stress um hormones are given a happy hormones are released okay a lot of tension is diffused from the brain so these are um some of the things that you need to create the environment mm. you know a woman that is dirty and has a, 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 an unkempt bedroom 
<laughs> mm. A woman that has dirty bed sheets, mm. and then you want to your husband to come in, he will not feel he will not feel comfortable. I've encouraged couples when you 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 your husband is at work, and then you want all of this, develop the habit of communicating to one another. You so it means it starts from yeah. If, it he has from, to, if they do has to start from uh, happening at eight p.m., you should start from like one p.m. Exactly. Ah. Sometimes okay. the man is even at work texting. That time when you were boyfriend and girlfriend, you were chatting all through from morning till night in mm. the evening and all that. But when people now get married, that disappears. Mm. No, it should be a recurrent thing. Okay. He's at work, you know. You should be able to text him, say something sexy, and then by the time you know he's getting ready to come back, dress good, ah. let the room smell good not to be a rapper exactly <laughs> things like that you know these are some of the things that couples can actually you know create an environment where even your your man will be happy to come home mm. if you're also a man make sure you maintain your hygiene you know i've seen men who talk, a lot of women have listened to them even when they come in uh, for consultation and they really say i cannot stand the mouth order from my husband yeah. have you told him before mm. my husband has body odor have you told him before buy him perfumes so men, because of the stress of going from one issue to the other to pick family bills and the rest of them now abandon this when they get married. Mm. But that's your dressing, how good you were looking, you know, how clean you were looking before you attracted that woman to agree to marry you. Why have you changed? So couples must be able to have all of this put into place. And then food. Okay. What you eat is very important. You know, take time even before sexual intercourse to feed your man properly if you're a man make sure your wife is also properly fed and be in a, a relaxed environment that you will have time for each other not in a hurry mm. not in a hurry there are times when quickies can come in but by and large that will not give the woman the satisfaction she needs okay you know but at least create that environment engage in foreplay at least between 15 20 30 minutes minimum uh. All right. That you can play with your woman before you now engage uh, in uh, vaginal or penetrative sex. Okay, so I'm going to ask you two questions again. And yeah. then one is, what, is, what are the dangers of using sexual enhancers, be it drugs, sweets, chocolates and all? And then secondly, I hear you talk about premature or uh, immediate ejaculation. Premature ejaculation. Okay, yeah. so for people who have such, I've seen so many questions on that. So for people who are suffering that, are there foods or fruits? Or exercises or things that they can actually do to get rid of it okay um, the first one was on um, sexual enhancers sexual enhancers um, I don't encourage them at a very personal level um, there are natural ways or natural remedies that one can take uh, to be able to spice up a man or a woman's sex life uh, what do sexual enhancers do? Use of steroids and then other medications and the rest. Uh, what they do uh, for a man, you take sexual enhancers, what, it, what those drugs or medications will do is to increase blood supply to the genitalia. Mm. Uh -huh. And that will also increase the rate, the heartbeat. Heartbeat, yeah. You know. okay. um, engaging in sexual intercourse on its own increases the heartbeat. Mm. So when you now take Mm. performance enhancing medications mm. you know they will again increase oh, the wow. rate of heart beat so here you are talking of endangering your heart mm. you know and then of course all of these drugs again have their binding sites in the brain if you get used to them you will not be able to perform without them yeah if you're addicted to them okay so uh for every man who engages in um sorry who feels uh, inadequacy in sexual performance um, some cannot sustain an erection for long, some cannot even get it. I've seen in my job, I see a lot of people who come in, they cannot even get an erection mm. at all. It is not something to be ashamed of. As you grow older, it, the, the, your capacity will in, definitely decrease. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. so, regardless of touch, regardless of anything? Yeah. Okay. So, and some again, because lifestyle, the lifestyle they live, uh, somebody who drinks lots of alcohol, somebody who smokes, the sexual performance uh, will definitely be reduced. Uh, somebody who's, who becomes who is um, hyperglycemic, mm. as the sugar level is uh, a bit high, will also definitely it will affect his um, uh, erectile function. Uh, an individual who is hypertensive, 
and it's on anti-hypertensive medications. Definitely, mm -hmm. anti-hypertensive medication. One of the side effects is also to affect uh, the sexual performance. So it will decrease all of this. Okay. So lifestyle here is very important. Okay. And for every individual here, exercise is very important. Not necessarily that you must jump into the field to do all of this. Yoga, something within the comfort of your room. Okay. You could dance. You could play some music. You could get a skipping rope just within your room. Something that you can do mm. very easily and then you get yourself, you know, sweat and then your body metabolism becomes better. All right. Uh, that's very good. If you have the chance to now hit the gym and the rest of them, that's an extra, which is very okay. Uh, then what you eat is very important. If you ask a lot of Nigerians, there are many of you take fruits. Of course, they are very expensive now, we know. Mm. Uh, but a lot of individuals don't even take them, especially in the cities. Where most of these fruits again when they come in you know the problems that are associated with them mm. but we should try All right. apples cucumbers watermelon um oranges and the rest of them all of this will help the body system because they contain certain ingredients antioxidants you know that could help boost um this erectile function and performance All right. uh, some of them contain coenzyme q10 which are of course very useful for both the heart and even our reproductive system some contain lycopene for example a fruit like tomato um, walnut, debino, all of this contains some of these useful uh, antioxidants that will naturally help the body system. All right. It's one of the reasons I must add here that, you see, our forefathers lived better and healthier lives than us today. The reason is because of this natural feeding habit. Mm. You know, they eat fresh vegetables, fresh mm. leaves, fresh nuts and the rest mm. of them. Whereas in modern day world, now everything is synthesized, canned. you know, mm. canned and the rest of them. So some of these preservatives and chemicals that are used have their own impact on our body system. Mm. So eat natural, green right. vegetation. Every individual should be able to have the time to visit a garden, get vegetables, get fruits on a daily basis. It helps a lot. Right. Uh, this will help to spice up uh, the individual's uh, life. All right, so for this would also help for those who are suffering from premature ejaculation. Yeah, even. premature ejaculation, yes, it depends on the on the level. Okay. Uh, for those, there are individuals who could be going through some psychological issues or challenges. The day-to-day -day modern, uh, uh, modern day-to-day -day, uh, challenges, activity, bills to pick and the rest. Psychologically, it can affect a man, mm. you know, and then lower um, sexual performance and the rest. However... Uh, a man should be tough. I, mean, I know it's not very easy. I'm speaking to fellow men uh, in Nigeria. It should be tough and all because you should understand that um, um, meeting up with your sexual responsibility at home is also part of you. Mm. So there's no point at which somebody will have to shy on this. But by and large, people can engage in lots of it. Women, again, when you are cooking, what do you prepare for your husband? Mm. What, what do you cook for your husband? You know, vegetables very important okay. ensure you have fruits if you have the time blend some of these fruits for him All right. you know rather than go for synthesized uh, drinks mm. i don't want to mention names mm. get the natural fruits and vegetables for and make good smoothies for, exactly for the family All right. this will help uh, the, the the individual's life Oh, wow. It's been a wonderful time having this conversation. Thank you so much. Um, like we could actually go on and on and on, but then our time is fast spent. Thank you so much for having this discussion with us, Dr. John. My pleasure. All right, viewers, I'm sure that you must have been rightly educated, entertained and informed. I'm sure some people would say, oh, thank God we had this conversation and not the politics policy. But then once in a while, we'll definitely have these conversations. We had so much to talk about. In fact, there are too many things that we need to even talk about. They will, <laughs> we'll definitely, we hope we'll, we'll be able to bring you again next time and you have our time. My again. pleasure always to be here. Great. All right. All right, viewers, we've been chatting with Dr. John Ade Iguve, who is a physician and public health specialist, project director at pre Diagnosis International, a non-governmental healthcare organization, which um, the head office is, found, is here in Abuja. And it's been a wonderful time here on D Conversation. I'm sure you must have been rightly educated, entertained, and informed. Send us a message. Send us your questions or your comments via any of our social media handles now showing on the screen. I'll see you again. My name is Annabel Oji. God bless you and yours, and God bless Nigeria. But before I go, ensure that you have a very healthy and safe sexual life. See you again next time.